Hey everyone, Teo here. Today I'm reviewing the ViewSonic Notas pen display. This is a 13.3 inch pen display targeted at teachers and students. And since you can draw and write on this, my review will be from the perspective of someone who creates digital art, who draws with drawing software. First of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from ViewSonic. And just to give you the bottom line up front, this pen display looks good, has solid build quality, drawing performance is satisfactory. However, there are some deal breakers. More specifically, the Mac driver has glitches, or maybe it's just the version that I am testing together with Mac OS 12 that I'm running. So the pen will work, the cursor will follow the pen tape, pressure and tilt will work. But when you try to change the pressure sensitivity, change the orientation or set your own physical shortcut buttons, all these changes that you make will not be saved. The Windows driver also has some glitches. I was able to adjust the pressure sensitivity. I can change the orientation for left-handed use. When I try to set keyboard shortcuts to these shortcut buttons, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't and revert to our original settings. So despite the inability to change and store certain settings with the driver, I did not experience um, any unusual behavior with most of the drone software that I've tested. There are other issues as well, which I will cover in this detailed and rather long review. If you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. The link will be in the video description below. These are the items included in the box. That's the quick start guide. USB-C to C cable, USB-C to USB type A cable, micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable, this is the pen, which is not powered by a battery, so no charging is required. There is an eraser button at the back, two side buttons here, a huge rubber grip, which is quite comfortable to hold, and the build quality of the pen is quite good. The pen supports tilt and slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Only three replacement nibs are included, and this is the nib remover. This is the two-in-one case and stand. The pen display is already inside and when you first open this up, there will be a reflective protective film on top of the pen display which protects the matte screen protector that you see here. This is the anti-glare matte screen protector. So you are supposed to peel off the protective film to get the matte textured drawing surface. The case covers all four sides and the corners are much thicker. On the side where the buttons are. You can see this edge is lowered so that you can press the buttons easily. This is the only angle of deployment for drawing. If you find this to be too low, you have to find something to prop up the pen display. If you want to prop up the pen display like this, um, it's kind of unstable. It's very easy for it to topple on its own weight. And also notice the desktop, it's upside now, there is no auto rotation. So if you want to rotate the desktop, you have to do it through the OS settings. And when you want to go back to the drawing deployment, again, you have to change the orientation. If you need a recommendation for a stand, this is the one that I recommend. This is the Pablo PR100, which you can deploy at any angle. You can find this using the link that I have for you in the video description below. All right, let me take out the pen display to show you how it actually looks. So this stand actually provides excellent protection for the pen display. And before I put this away, let me show you the texture on the front and on the other side. This is the pen holder. This pen display is quite thin. It's just seven millimeter. So this looks like a tablet but it's not a tablet, it's a pen display. It's a monitor that you can draw on. So you have to connect this monitor to a computer in order to use this. The weight is 0 0.8 kg. And this is how it looks on the back with the four rubber feet and this very nice matte textured surface. I'm not sure if this is metal or plastic, but the finishing is really nice. It feels very premium. There are six customizable side buttons here. They have good feedback and firm clicks to them. 
On the other side, we have the OSD button and toggle. You can use this to move up and down the OSD menu. This is the back button, two USB-C ports and the micro HDMI port. So I've just connected the pen display to my computer, which is running Mac OS. This pen display is also compatible with Windows. I'm using my own USB-C cable here because I like this cable. With USB-C connection, you just need one cable, which minimizes cable clutter. If your computer cannot provide enough power to power the pen display using whatever video cable you are using, you will need to connect an additional USB-C cable to a power source. So it may seem like the Mac that I have here can provide power to power the pen display, but it's actually not powering this at full power. So what happens is, uh, for example, here I have the OSD set to 100% brightness. If I restart or disconnect and connect the cable again, let me just do that right now for you to see, the OSD settings will go back to original settings, which is 50% brightness. So each time you restart the Mac or disconnect and connect the cable, the OSD will reset and you have to set the settings again, which you can imagine is incredibly frustrating. So the solution to prevent this from happening, the solution to let the pen display remember the settings is to connect additional power to the pen display. So now with additional power, when I disconnect and connect or restart the Mac or my Windows laptop, the pen display will be able to remember the OSD settings. I've tested this with my Mac mini desktop and same situation happened there. When I tested this with my Windows laptop, um, connecting using the USB-C cable. It was actually able to restart and remember the settings. However, uh, with Windows, when I connect and disconnect, again, the OSD will revert to default settings. I've experienced this behavior with pen displays from other brands before. So sometimes just having one single USB-C cable may not be enough. Design of this pen display looks beautiful. This is a 13.3 inch pen display. The resolution is Full HD 1920 by 1080. There will be slight pixelation, but Full HD resolution is still very usable on a 13.3 inch display. You are going to get the best image quality when you view the pen display straight on. When you have this at an angle, you can see there is a drop in brightness. The colors don't shift that much, but the drop in brightness is definitely noticeable. I've already color calibrated the pen display and I measured a maximum brightness of 143 nits, which is comparable to other brands of pen display. And the color accuracy is quite good. I measured color support for 100% sRGB. By the way, this is not a touch screen, so you cannot use finger gestures to navigate uh, around. You have to use your pen and the keyboard. Let's talk about some deal breakers. If you are using a dual display setup, there is no functionality in the driver that allows you to switch the cursor from one display to the other. So there is no switch display shortcut. So you can be drawing or moving things around here. And if you want to move your cursor here to do something, you can't do that. You have to use your mouse or you use the trackpad here. So you cannot use the pen to control the cursor here. The next deal breaker is the Mac driver that I'm testing has glitches. This Mac driver cannot remember the settings, so I can change the pen to be more or less sensitive, but the changes either won't be reflected when I'm drawing or the driver just cannot remember the settings that I have changed here. And also with the shortcut buttons, I can change to my own customized shortcuts, 
but the driver cannot remember it. So next time when I launch the driver, everything will revert to original settings. The next deal breaker is if you are a left-handed user, obviously you won't be able to use this pen display with Mac because the driver is not working. With the Windows driver, you can change the orientation 180 degrees so that the physical buttons here are on the right side and the ports are on the left side. However, you won't be able to use the pen display in this case because when the ports are on the left side, you can see the case here, it does not have an opening for the ports. So if you are a left-handed user using this pen display with Windows, you have to use this pen display without the case. There is slight cursor offset at the top and bottom of the pen display. Near the extreme top edge, the cursor would misalign to the top and right side. So when I'm clicking on things here, I have to make sure to look at the cursor and not the pen tip. At the bottom, the cursor is offset to the right side of the pen tip by a few pixels. So same thing here, when I click on things, I have to look at where the cursor is and not where the pen tip is. At the extreme left edge, the cursor is offset 2 to 3 pixels to the top of the pen tip. There is no cursor offset at the extreme right edge. If you are a left-handed user, the offset may be in a different direction. But thankfully, the cursor offset is not that bad to the extent where I would click on things by mistake. I'm still able to click on the icons, the menus very accurately. Just that when I am near to the edge, I have to slow down to see where the cursor is. But I don't have any problems clicking on the wrong things. Let's see what the driver can do. This by the way is the Windows driver. Here you can adjust the tilt and pressure sensitivity. You can customize the two side buttons here. The main thing to note is there is no switch display functionality and there is no way for you to customize the button at the back which is the eraser uh, I guess you don't need to customize that because uh, it's quite handy to have the eraser at the back when you change the orientation you are actually changing the orientation of the cursor the desktop will still be the right side up just that the cursor will move uh, in different or opposite direction so if you are a left-handed user, you have to change the orientation using your OS settings. Please note that there is no calibration button. So if there is offset between the cursor and the pen tip, you won't be able to calibrate the pen to remove that offset or misalignment. And the express keys is where you can customize the six side buttons. You can input your own keyboard shortcuts and there is no switch display functionality here as well. So earlier I mentioned the Mac driver not working. Upon further testing of the Windows driver, I found out that sometimes the Windows driver doesn't reflect the changes that I made as well. So hopefully ViewSonic can fix the driver issues in the future. At least the pen pressure settings on Windows work. So let's do the line quality test. By the way, the display is laminated, so there is no gap between the drawing surface and the LCD beneath. So when you're drawing, it really looks like the pen tip is directly above the line. Initial activation force is minimal, so you can draw thin lines very easily by using minimal pressure. This is how thick the line really is. Let's draw some slow diagonal lines to see if there is jitter or wobble. This looks straight enough for me. Let's take a look at the transition from thin to thick. The transition is very smooth. Let's draw some 
dots so I can't tap on the canvas to draw the dots with this app Medibank Paint Pro this is Affinity Photo and I can draw the dots by tapping on the canvas so it seems like there are some issues when it comes to drawing dots with Medibank Paint Pro let's see how well the pen is able to maintain pressure to draw lines with consistent width or thickness so this is quite good I've adjusted the pen so that I have to press down harder to draw to get the lines so now you can see the stroke state taper much better this is the original settings so you can see the lines they don't taper as sharply or you can go into the settings for the brushes individually to change how they taper this works well for me just that I have to press down a bit harder and the thing with pressing down a bit harder is this is a matte screen protector so you can get scratches on this matte screen protector in fact I have already accidentally created some scratches here I'm not sure if you can see it I'm actually not too bothered by the scratches because scratches are going to be inevitable when you work a lot I have a pen tablet in my office that has so much scratches and I have tested so many pen displays and pen tablets um, that I'm no longer bothered to keep the drawing surface scratch free Alright, let's talk more about the drawing experience I have the pen display on my own stand because the flip cover stand is just too low for my drawing comfort I have tested this pen display with various drawing apps such as Medibank Paint Pro which is the one that you see here Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Krita, Clip Studio Paint and Adobe Illustrator which is a graphic design software and most of those drawing apps they work really well except for Adobe Illustrator on Mac OS which for some reason um, the pressure sensitivity just doesn't work pressure sensitivity works really well here unfortunately at the time of making this video I have a lot of issues with the Mac driver more specifically the Mac driver wasn't able to remember the settings that I set the Windows driver thankfully works without uh, much issues so the lines are able to come out the way I expect them to if you are using this pen display for educational purposes for learning long distance learning for writing um, it's going to work fine for digital drawing we need more precision so we really need the lines to come out exactly the way we need them to look so the lines are quite smooth sometimes when I tap on the surface the dots don't come out but now it works and now let's color this overall performance um, it's fine there are no major or unpleasant surprises so this is the type of performance you can expect with all the other drawing software that I have mentioned if you want to do some quick cross hatching you can do so pressure sensitivity works really well and the initial activation force is good you can draw thin lines rather easily a 13.3 inch display is actually a good size to work on 
you can have a good amount of drawing area even with your palettes on the left and right side let's add some shadows I feel like this drawing needs some spots of white and yep it does need some spots of white let me remove the side palettes to show you how this sketch looks so let me just zoom in I set this button to zoom in and it doesn't work um, I have zoom buttons here as well actually these are the predefined zoom buttons from the driver and they work so sometimes when I set my own keyboard shortcuts here they don't work but thankfully when I adjust the pressure sensitivity for the pan at least the driver can still reflect those changes or those adjustments anyway I don't use these buttons I always use my keyboard for keyboard shortcuts because it's easier and I have access to all the keyboard shortcuts so this is the drawing that I drew uh, really quickly I didn't experience any difficulty or glitches while drawing this so this is definitely a capable pen display that you can use to create digital drawing and since you can use this to create digital drawing it's definitely very capable for educational purposes for distance learning um, yep all right to conclude the view sonic notas is a good looking pen display with solid build quality and very satisfactory drawing and writing performance my main issue with this product is with the drivers with the mac driver i have tested i wasn't able to get it to save the settings that i've changed and with the windows driver it works better but when i set keyboard shortcuts to these side buttons uh, sometimes those settings are not saved the other thing to note is you may have to connect an additional power cable in addition to the USB-C cable if you want the OSD menu to save and remember your settings yeah so those are the issues that I have with this product but otherwise it performs pretty well with all the major or, or the popular drawing software that I have tested all right if you guys have any questions let me know in the comment section below and thanks for watching see you guys again bye